Okay, so today I'm going to go over uh, service auto discovery. In particular, this is service auto discovery uh, on Docker, any microservices, whatever web services are running. And we're doing this through use of console, registrator, and HA proxy, along with Docker as well. So to get started, to give you kind of a visual depiction of what I'm going to show in this example, and again, this is a consolidated uh, example, so it's not exactly what you see necessarily in production, but it can be translated into that. So in this example, I have a single Docker node. We're going to have a registrator container running on that, which is going to monitor the Docker node for services and containers that start up on it. We're going to have a console container, which registrator speaks to and actually provides the information on each service. And then we're going to have HA proxy, which is also running a console template which will take the information from the console uh, container and apply that to the HA proxy config. So basically, as services come up inside the Docker container, a registrator will know of them, update console, and HA proxy will then um, basically assimilate them into its configuration and present them, at which point you can uh, hit those from the outside. In our example, I'm using docker.lab.local, just a, a local a local DNS entry. To show this example, I'm going to use Docker run commands. This could all be set up in a Docker compose, but I really want to break down what each command is doing, uh, the pieces of that command, and then show you them in action. So step by step, how this all comes together. This is something that I found it was hard to find when I was looking for this information on how to uh, understand how this all comes together. So the first piece we're going to do is we're going to run the console container inside of our Docker node. So here's the command. Uh, you should already have some understanding of Docker uh, and HA proxy uh, in regard to this uh, video. So I'm not going to go over different ports and items, but I'm going to touch base on the parts that uh, are important here. And those parts being um, the service name is something console is looking at. And then the command at the end of your Docker run. And in this particular case, that command is console agent uh, UI, which server bootstrap. The UI um, tells a console agent to present um, the user interface that you can hit from a web console. And then the client 0000. The reason we're using this, typically this is basically your bind command, what interface you're binding to. Since we're running this as a Docker container, we don't necessarily have that information because it's dynamic. So setting it for 0.0.0.0 .0 tells it to listen on all interfaces, therefore picking up the Docker interface that's uh, presented to the container. So we're going to go ahead and grab that command. And I have a Docker node here. This is just Docker running on Linux. And uh, I'm going to fire off these commands, and as I fire them off, I'm going to show you each service coming up. So I'll explain what each command's doing, and show each service as it comes up, and how it all comes together. Okay, we can see we now have the console container running on our Docker node. If we come over here to our web browser, we can see the actual service come up. And by default, the only thing in there will be console itself. Uh, as we bring up Registrator, it will start bringing more services in here that it finds running on Docker. So looking at that, the Registrator container we're going to bring up, for Registrator in particular, is the, the volume entry here. It's not your typical volume mapping. It's actually mapping the Docker socket running on the node, the host itself, uh, so that Registrator can get to the information presented there and use that to update a console. When Registrator runs, it's waiting for uh, a few parameters to be entered into it. Here we have the IP of the host that you're want, you want to look at, and that IP currently, I've got it set with a bash script, which uh, just pulls the host IP of the node, the Docker node itself. And the reason you're going to want to do that is you could use this across a whole swarm of systems where each Docker node uh, it has Registrator running and Registrator is recording the information on that particular box and updating your console cluster, a singular console cluster, with the information. So you can send stuff all over to a whole bunch of different nodes. And in the console area here, because I'm running 
this consolidated environment that we talked about, and everything's on one, one node, uh, I can get away with using the same bash script to determine the IP that you need to go to for console. Normally, you'd want to enter in, like down here, an example. You'd want to enter in wherever your console cluster is in your production environment that you're going to be sending that information to. Okay, so we're going to take that command and fire that off on our node to get Registrator running. And here we can see uh, the Registrator container is now running on our node. We come into console itself and we'll see that it did find a few more services uh, running in that Docker node. And what those are are just the other ports that are exposed from console. When the console container ran, there's a few more items as you can see. Obviously the port 8500 is what we're touching right now to get to the web interface service of console. So the next portion will be HA proxy. HA proxy is your load balancer which allows you to hit the different services and it will go into your various Docker nodes and let you get to whatever service you need to run no matter where it's at. This is what kind of brings it all together. The key takeaway from this is the console template entry for the command to run on that container at the end. Console template is a, is a portion or a tool made by the same uh, company that makes console. So when HA proxy comes up, you can fire that off. And what we're doing with that is saying console template so I'm saying watch in this particular case again you'd probably want to enter in your production environment but in my case it's a consolidated example in this test so I get away with that command again where I can just pull the uh, host IP right off that node so the template says use this template file and replace the HA proxy config composed your new config file and then run service HA proxy reload so let me show you that template because that's a real important piece of it in that template, what we're doing is for our backends of HA proxy, in this particular case, it's a three tier. We have web, biz, data. And in there, it's looking for the range web for this particular backend. And it says, if you know HA proxy, which you should if you're viewing this, and your configuration is you enter your servers and it automatically will start entering that range. And I'll show you how that all comes together. So server, the ID, address, port, you have your uh, check intervals and then end. And that's the end of that range. So I'll show you as I kick off each of these how HA proxy is going to basically consume those and turn those into services to present. So now we have console, registrator, and HA proxy running on our Docker node. And if we come over here, I've got we have the HA proxy status page where we can see the different services and we can see those backends you know, the web, biz, data, and right now nothing's in there. If we look on console, Registrator found the fact that HA proxy's there, but remember, in our template, I'm not concerning myself with any services named HA proxy or console. I'm looking for web, biz, and data. And I want it to consume those and add those in wherever it may find them. So here's where everything really starts coming together. I've got a simple web server. This is just an Apache image I put together. And we're going to kick this off and I'll show you how it all starts to come together. So there's, there's, this is where these service tags and service names, these all start coming into it. So the service name, this is the key. This is what HA proxy is going to look for and start grabbing those services out of it. Uh, the service ID web01. This component right here, these two variables, these have to do with the check that console is going to run to make sure that the service is actually up. So let's fire that off. Do our Docker node, and we're going to fire off the web. So this is our this is our web01. So now we've got uh, HA proxy, registrator console, and we have a web a web service running in there. If we come back to console, we can see that this web service came up. And here's the tag. Here's where that service tag comes into place. So we have Web01. It's found on this, this node. And here's the port. When we come to HA proxy, here's where it actually found it and it added it all on its own. It added that service. Console template looked at console, saw the services available, combined that information with the fact that it's waiting for that range right here to add that in. And it went ahead and added that service and is now presented to you. So if you come into Docker Lab, 
you're now hitting that service. It's available to you. So again, that's that's the, the basics of how it finds it. And we'll show firing off a whole bunch of other services, how those all come up. So we'll just take the rest of these and fire these off and get these other containers running. So let those all kick off. Now we've got uh, multiple containers running in here. We've got Web01, Web02, Data01, Biz02. We have all these different services kicked off in here and we have um, our auto service discovery uh, picking these up for us. So if we come back into here, we'll see that Registrator has found Data, Biz. It knows about the other tags, Web01, Web02, Biz. It, it, they're identified through that service name Again, there's lots of different ways to do this. In my example, I'm just showing you how it discovers those and how you can piece those together as a group. Come back into HA Proxy, and we can see it picked up all those services. It knows about those now, and it will keep track of them. If they're removed or the containers are shut down, Registrator will know about that. It'll update HA Proxy and remove that service out of there. You can do intervals based on how long it waits to do that. But overall, this is the, uh, the essence of auto service discovery using these tools. For a production environment, that looks a little bit more like this. So here we can see we'd have an HA proxy high availability cluster at the top. It wouldn't necessarily be, a, it doesn't have to be a Docker container. It could, you could have it as Docker containers or two VMs running. It doesn't matter how you want to fire that off. Um, then you'd also have a console cluster, not just a single one, but a set of a uh, cluster of console uh, services running together. And then you may have a swarm of Docker nodes. And when your global uh, um, variables in there will be to run registrator on every node, which would monitor the node itself, what services may be running on it. And you fire off a service in that swarm, doesn't matter where it ends up living, with that command, the registrator will see it and update console, which will update the HA proxy. And then the whole environment, it doesn't matter where they move to, where they live, whatever's managing them for you, they automatically are found and updated and HA proxy knows about that, therefore allowing your call to get to where it needs to go to process that service. Well, that's it for this example. I hope you had some good takeaways from that. Um, I will try to post the actual code and commands I'm using. Overall, again, this was just to show you how these all go together in this auto service discovery. And thanks for watching.